Hi, my name is Brittany Butler, and I'm the student program assistant for the June Anderson Center for Women and Non-Traditional Students. Today, I will be discussing the importance of mental health among non-traditional students. First, I would like to define what a non-traditional student is. Typically, when you think of a college student, you think of an 18-year-old recent high school graduate who probably lives on campus and still receives financial help from his or her parents. But not all college students fit that criteria. According to educational statistics, they say that more than 47% of students enrolled in a higher education institution are older than the age of 25. This includes students pursuing their undergraduate degree, as well as those enrolled in graduate and doctoral programs. A non-traditional student can be a caregiver, a military member, a person who works full-time, or someone who has an extended gap in their education. Here at MTSU, our student body population consists of 30% of students who consider themselves a non-traditional student. Do non-traditional students have unique mental health needs compared to traditional students? If you answer yes, then you are correct. Non-traditional students often face more challenges than traditional students. Non-traditional students face several unique challenges when returning to the classroom. Here I've listed a few, but there are several others. The first one, a larger gap in education. And what we see here is that the non-traditional students feel like they can't relate to other traditional students or they don't fit in. And so they tend to isolate themselves socially because of the age gap and the commuting challenge. And as humans, we look for a sense of belonging. And we also know that that sense of belonging helps us with coping with stressful events and negative emotions. Other challenges that non-traditional students face is balancing financial obligations and finding time to study. Non-traditional students face several demands and personal life responsibilities, like raising a family and working a full-time job, which requires them to have to make intentional effort in time management, keeping up with the different assignments they have at school and at work, while also sometimes battling the fear of degree attainment. Coping with everyday challenges. We know that stress is a natural part of life and that everybody deals with some form of stress, be it small or large, throughout their daily lives. There's a term in neuroscience called the fight or flight response. And this occurs when we're experiencing something mentally, physically, or emotionally stressful. But if we're in this fight or flight response for too long, then we'll be putting our mental health or well-being at risk. So it's very important for non-traditional students to know their individual stressors, to avoid physical and emotional problems that could jeopardize or hinder their lives or their educational advancements. The first step in managing stress is to know the symptoms. Stress is our body's way of telling us something is wrong. Here is a list of common symptoms of stress. Feeling overwhelmed, lack of concentrating, feeling nervous or anxious, feeling burnt out from studying or professional work. Recognizing stress can be hard because as humans, we are used to being under pressure and stressed out to the point where we don't know we're stressed until it's too late and we're at our breaking point. Stress is different for each individual. What is stressful for one person may not be stressful to someone else. So it is very important to be mindful of your individual stressors. If you're ever feeling any of these symptoms, I urge you to reach out to MTSU's Counseling Services or the June Anderson Center for more resources and help. In a research study conducted by Rebecca Trans and her colleagues, they looked at the differences in life stress, anxiety, depression, and alcohol use among traditional and non-traditional students. And what they found was that non-traditional students scored significantly higher on life stress, 
anxiety, and depression than traditional students. And this is not surprising because we know that non-traditional students have those unique stressors. They also found that non-traditional students often found the stresses and challenges of college to be very significant and some experience diminished support as they see themselves as more isolated. And to reiterate the point that I said on the previous slide, it is very important that non-traditional students find that sense of belonging on campus because we know a sense of belonging increases a student's success. On a more positive note, in a study conducted by Turnbull and Hasten, they surveyed first-year college students to find the differences in life resilience between traditional and non-traditional students. And what they found was that those students who identified as non-traditional students in life aspects, including age, employment, and parenting responsibilities, had a significantly higher resilience rate compared to those of traditional students. These findings show that life experiences commonly affiliated with being a mature age student, including work and being a caregiver, may contribute to higher resilience levels. Now, we know resilience does not eliminate stress. It just gives us the capability to face our challenges head on and to increase our ability to cope with negative events. And a few ways to improve on your resilience level is to manage your stress well, change your negative thoughts, Create a support network. Take care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. And also find meaning in things that you do. What to do if you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed? A few tips for self-care. Be true to yourself. Be realistic. If you're feeling overwhelmed, overworked, learn to say no. The power of two letters, no lose the ego. No one is perfect, so don't expect that from yourself or others. And also, don't hesitate to ask for help. I feel like as humans, this is one of our uh, negative traits. We don't want to ask someone for help because we feel like that is a sign of weakness when actually it's the opposite. Meditate and breathe. Mindfulness meditation is proven to reduce symptoms of stress. I actually took a positive psychology course with Dr. Gordon and he teaches us about the components of mindfulness and the benefits of it. And if anyone gets a chance to take that course, I would strongly recommend that. Also, YouTube has guided meditation videos that will assist you in meditation as well. Share your feelings. Stay in touch with family and friends for emotional support. You know, it's very important for non-traditional students to stay connected. And like I said earlier, we tend to isolate ourselves, which is not good. So, right, stay connected with your family and friends or professor. Exercise. Regular exercise is proven to reduce stress. Just 20 to 30 minutes a day benefits your mind and body. Healthy lifestyle, which I feel is the hardest on the list, um, Controlling what we put in our mouths. Limit alcohol intake. Limit your caffeine intake. Um, get adequate sleep. Be flexible. You know, if you're willing to give in, others may meet you halfway. And remember, arguing only intensifies stressful feelings. Hobbies. Take a break from your worries and enjoy an activity that makes you happy. If that's cooking, painting, do what you love. Are you a non-traditional student looking to become more involved on campus or want to build relationships with other non-traditional students? Well, Pinnacle Honor Society is the place for you. Pinnacle is an organization that celebrates the accomplishments of non-traditional students. If you would like more information on Pinnacle Honor Society, please visit the June Anderson Center website or follow us on Instagram and Facebook.